Hi, I'm Brenda Rodriguez, Farmer Manager with Green Our Planet. And welcome to our lesson today about soils. Soil is the foundation to any good garden. It doesn't matter where you live, if you have good soil, guaranteed you're gonna have a great garden. So what do we need to understand about soil? Soil is made up of two components. First, the soil itself, which is inorganic matter that's broken down from rocks. And how I like to teach the kids is if you can imagine a rock that breaks off and tumbles down a mountain, what happens to the rock as it falls down the mountain is it breaks into smaller and smaller pieces until it tumbles through a creek or a river or is blown by the wind and breaks down into particles small enough that they have now become part of our topsoil. If you were to dig down into soil, you would see the difference in colors in the layers. The top layer where most of the plants grow is usually a lot darker and richer color than the other layers of soil down below. Why is that? Because all the organic matter that is contributed to building up the soil in the top layer. So that's why we call it a topsoil. Typical topsoil is about 10% organic matter. In a very highly maintained landscape area, it's about 30%. In our vegetable gardens, we like to maintain about 30 to 50% organic matter content to keep the soils healthy. So what is the difference between soil particles and organic matter? Well, we know that the soil particles come from rock originally. Where does organic matter come from? It comes from anything that's organic. So all of us and all of the insects and birds and fish and plants and anything that is living, when it dies, will begin to decompose. When it decomposes, it is now officially organic matter. How does that help in a garden? I'm going to give you a very simple demonstration on what the difference is in soil particles and organic matter particles that are in your garden soil. So here is a particle of soil. Remember, broken down piece of rock. And now we're going to water our soil. Well, if I pour the water over the soil, where's the water going? It just kind of runs off it and around it. There's a little bit stuck to it, but not a lot. Now let's take a look at what organic matter does in the soil. I'm using this sponge to represent organic matter because this is kind of how it works in your soil. So you have organic matter content blended in with your rock particles in your soil and now we're gonna water our garden. What's the difference? Can you see the difference between when I poured the water over the rock and on the sponge? It absorbed it. That's right. Organic matter has the capacity to hold 50 times the amount of water that a soil particle does. Do you think that's good for your garden plants? You betcha. The process of organic matter breaking down is called decomposition. If there isn't moisture present in the soil, the decomposition process slows way down. In a desert environment, it almost doesn't happen at all. Moisture is a key part of decomposition. But it isn't the moisture that breaks down the organic matter. It is the decomposers. Who are they? They are microorganisms such as bacteria, fungus, and then we have the creatures that we can see like earthworms and beetles and grubs, and then we have the larger critters such as cockroaches and mice. They all contribute to breaking down organic matter. If we delve into a little bit of science here, as organic beings, what are we made of? We are all made of little particles that are put together a certain way 
that makes us distinctly unique. So if particles are put together a certain way, it would make a human being, a fish, a tree, a flower, a worm. When they break down, those little particles are then broken down and available for roots to pick up and eat. So organic matter in garden soil is a very important factor to make sure that nutrients are there, that your plant roots can grab a hold of and eat and grow big and produce lots of delicious vegetables for you. So where do we get this organic matter to put in our garden? Well, for one, we can use the garden waste that is being generated by our garden, or you can purchase it prepackaged at your local nursery or hardware store. You really want to make sure that you don't let your garden soils dry out completely because then all the microbial life in the soil can die. Did you know that in a quarter cup of garden soil, there are over a billion and a half microorganisms living in a quarter cup of soil? Wow, who knew? So let's keep them happy and healthy and keep our garden soil moist. Thank you for joining us today in the garden. I'm Brenda Rodriguez with Green Our Planet, and we'll see you again soon.